Who's Juliet and why does she have a gun? All I know you smell good. You smell good. All I know you smell good. You smell good. Well gone people and welcome back to my YouTube channel and if this is your first time on my channel a special welcome to you as well I do hope you stick around and subscribe as you can see from the title my loves yes I've spoken about designer I've spoken about celebrity fragrances today we're speaking about niche baby the fragrances that I'll be reviewing today comes from the house of Juliet has a gun I'm not gonna lie that's a weird name to give a house Juliet has a gun yeah weird the discovery kit this one I got this online I think I got this on John Lewis like if you know what I'm gonna leave it in the description box below the kit my loves is just a slide out so you just slide this off don't really need that then you have the samples in here this is just a booklet with all the fragrances like a bit of synopsis and at the back he's the guy that owns the company this discovery kit comes with eight samples inside there's another oud there's anyway there's lady vengeance there's vanilla vibes sunny side up moscow mule mmm and their bestseller not a perfume a little info about the house Juliet has a gun the company was started by romano ricci he's the great grandson of nina ricci and he was an apprentice in perfume for about four years and then he persuaded francis kurt de jean to come and work with him many of us know Francis Curtis John, Baccarat Rouge 540, you know, Burberry for her, everybody knows him. The name Juliet Has a Gun comes from Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, with the gun symbolizing perfume as a liberating weapon of seduction. Like, if that ain't sexy, like, listen, hello? My loves, I do apologize if I sound a bit nasally. Um, hey Fever is here. Why am I looking outside like Hey Fever is out? Well, it is outside. <laughs> hey Fever is here, and it's literally kicking my ass. Like, yeah my eyes keep watering my noise keep guys i'm just trying to get through this video without crying <laughs> damn it let's kick things off with sunny side up this is a woody florally musk kind of perfume that was launched in 2017 this is a creamy gourmand fragrance like it's a warm cozy blend between coconut milk sandalwood jasmine and musk sandalwood is the prominent note in here but to me it comes off a bit cheap and synthetic but the coconut milk and the vanilla it just rounds it out and make this composition a bit better to deal with guys the only way i can describe this fragrance is that it's silky it's smooth and it's very creamy when i read about sunny side up i was excited i was thinking about something sparkling something bright something fresh but no this is linear and this is warm my problem is why is anything you want to convey as sweet and warm be in any correlation with eggs um, am i going crazy like, but if you go for like warm creamy kind of fragrances sunny side up is right up your alley Next up, we have Moscow Mule. I'm not gonna lie, I could do well with a Moscow Mule right now. For those that don't know, a Moscow Mule is a cocktail from Russia. It involves vodka, ginger bay, and lime juice. Just like the cocktail, this is sparkling, this is gingery, this is citrusy, this is fresh. This fragrance opens all citrus. There's lime, there's lemon, and there's bergamot. This fragrance is very crisp and light. So light that it only lasts one hour. Guys. I mean, after the hour, you can still smell it, but just faint. Like, you could faintly smell it. I find this to be very generic as well, because it reminds me of Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana. The dry down for this is very musky, and that's down to the white musk and the amber as well. This is a fresh, feminine, sensual scent. Shame about the lasting power. This is Moscow Mule. Next up, we have Lady Vengeance. This was created in 2006. It comes from the Rick Meets Romance collection. It's inspired by a modernized version of Shakespeare. Listen, when I heard Lady Vengeance, I was like, yes, a risky girl. I was thinking a perfume that's gonna be powerful, sexy, you know, like, in your face. Did this live up to its name? No. You know what? Let's get into what this smells like though. This is a rose dominant perfume. There's Moroccan and Bulgarian rose in here. I'm a fan of rose, so this wasn't even a problem for me. This opens with a rosy patchouli. Listen, the patchouli wants everyone to know that it's there. Like when you spray it, the patchouli came out and said, yo, wagwan, my dear, I'ma now leave, yeah? <laughs> 
So yeah, it starts out with this rosy patchouli and then it fades into this cloud of fresh rosy vanilla with undertones of white musk and powdered amber. It does come off a bit metallic to me as well. Say you get like, you take a spoon and you, in the spoon you pour like rose oil and patchouli oil and then you'd heat it up. Like that's the scent I'm getting from it because you get in the metallic but you also get the rose and the patchouli. Let me tell you the scenario I get when I smell this perfume. I'm not saying it's just these people who are supposed to wear this perfume, okay? If you get a sample for this and you like it, wear it, yeah? But this is my, my review, yeah? So, the person I see wearing this is a, say a lady in her, like, her late 50s. But it's like Stella, you know, like Stella got her groove back. Yes. So it's like she's going to her book club and like everybody drives their car to their book club. But Stella, no. Stella has a boy toy. Yeah. Stella has her boy toy that drives her to her book club. Yeah. So when all her friends see her pulling up with her boy toys and they're like, oh yeah, look, Stella and her boy toys. Here. Yes. You see when she walks in and everybody sees her and everybody's like, oh, Stella, you look good. And she walks in and say, yeah, Stella got her groove back. She's wearing Lady Vengeance. Yeah. This is what I get from Lady Vengeance. As I was saying earlier, when I heard about Lady Vengeance, I was thinking like a deep, dark perfume, you get me? Like with deep notes. Like when you smell it, you think of a lady that's riding like a Harley bike. Is that what you call them, Harley? L listen, you know them bikes, yeah? Like full suit of leather, you know, like leather boots and that. Like that's what I thought about. But to me, this is, this is a powdered rose. This is soft. This is sweet. This is a very soft rose, a soft powdery rose. It smells good. Longevity wasn't bad. I got about five, five and a half hours out of this. Projection, mm, it was, the projection was soft. Soft to moderate and and yeah, it's just a nice, sweet, powdery rose. Lady Vengeance. Next up we have, mmm, yes guys, that's the name of the perfume. It's called, mmm. This is a very onomatopoeic name for a perfume. A onomatopoeia is the process of creating a word that phonetically imitates or resembles the sound that it describes. So like, splash, boom, pop. Bit of English lesson for you there. You're welcome. And yes, these are tested glasses, guys. I'm, I'm literally blind. I have a myopia, astigmatism. Back to the perfume. Mmm, was launched in 2016. It's known as a Floriental Gourmand. On the initial spray, I do get a lot of raspberry, but then along with that, I get like a medicinal sharpness. And I'm assuming that's from the Neroli, you know, the Neroli mixed with raspberry. Yeah, I get that as well. After getting past the top notes, coming down to the middle, I get this powdery jasmine in tuberose mix i don't get the orange blossom at all for the dry down you get this caramelly is caramelly a word you know what i'm inventing that today <laughs> The dry down, you get this caramelly, musky vanilla with like shavings of sandalwood. You don't get a lot of sandalwood in here. This is why I said, you know, you get like a shaving of sandalwood. This perfume is very sweet, but it's not overbearing type of sweet. It's light and fruity. And this was good. I must give them that. I got about six to seven, seven and a half, maybe pushed to eight hours, but the projection was low. And this is just a sweet, fruity gourmand goodness and this is mm. <laughs> Next up, we have Vanilla Vibes. This is a oriental fragrance that was launched in 2019. This is a salty, aquatic, creamy vanilla type of fragrance. This is a perfume that will do well in summer because it gives off this sea salt, oceanic vibe with like a whiff of vanilla, not too much vanilla. This perfume is making me think of like a tropical holiday, you know, like pina colada, suntan lotion as it's warm and it's sweet. Funny enough, I can smell coconuts, but coconuts is not in the notes. The notes that stand out in this are the salt and the orchid. The longevity is decent, five to six hours, but the projection, you see when you spray that, the projection, it lasted maybe, maybe 30 minutes, but the projection on this, it, was, it wasn't beast mode, but the projection was good. It was all right, you get what I mean? My problem is the vanilla isn't a prominent note in this, and I wish it had more vanilla, seeing as it's called Vanilla Vibes. It reminds me of, oh my God, Beach Walk. It reminds me of Beach Walk by Mason Margiela. I did that video, I leave it here, I link it here for you. But yeah, it gives you that expensive suntan lotion kind of vibe. But yeah, Vanilla Vibes. Next up we have Anyway. This might be my favorite in the line. This was launched in 2013. It's a very citrusy, musky type of fragrance. 
with top notes of neroli and lime this is crisp this is citrusy and this is bright this is what i expected sunny side up to smell like it even smells clean they did say that Romano went back to basics with this fragrance because he wanted this perfume to bring this breath of freshness, you know, simplicity, carefreeness. And that's exactly what I get from this fragrance. It's like a citrusy, clean, fresh laundry kind of smell. This doesn't project well, but the last in power is something to talk about. Like seven plus hours, yes, you can still smell it. It's like you get this fresh, gentle jasmine and you get a bit of warmth from the woody amber base. This is just a nice, classy, fresh fragrance. I would spray this like in the mornings. This is not like a date night type of fragrance. Now nah, this is day, daytime fragrance. You know, like you get up in the morning after you've had your shower, you're getting ready and that. Yeah, this is what you wear. Maybe a gym scent. I know people kind of frown on people that wear fragrances to the gym, but this is like light and airy. This is what I get from this. Guys, I like this. This is anyway. Second to last, we have another oud. And just as the name says, it's just another oud. There's something different about this oud. The thing is, this to me is like a sweet oud. You know how ouds can be deep, dark and pungent? This one, this could easily be like an introduction to ouds. It's sweet, it's spicy. This is an oud that I can wear because I'm not a massive fan on ouds, but I can tolerate this one. This starts out with like a hint of bergamot and raspberry, but the thing is with the oud, you can smell the oud throughout the entire perfume. The dry down is this earthy oud with musk and sensual amber. I think this is best suited for like autumn, winter and like early spring. The sillage on this, I'll give seven out of 10 and the longevity, I'll give this a nine out of 10. And that's only because the oud, cause you know how oud is, yeah? Cause oud is a potent note and it just wants you to know that it's there. This could easily be chosen as a date night fragrance. Like to me, it's unisex, but because it's so sweet and spicy, it's leaning towards the feminine side. This is another oud and lastly closing the show we have their bestseller not a perfume this was launched in september 2010 as the name suggests not a perfume you know how perfume usually has three notes top middle and base note the mono ingredient in this not a perfume is cetalox or ambroxin ambroxin is a synthetic note that was discovered in the 1950s it was discovered because they wanted something to replace ambergris because ambergris was so expensive ambroxin is also known to be a long lasting and a complex note ambroxin has characteristics of mask clean powdery amber woody notes all rolled into one ambroxin is normally found in the base notes of fragrances and it's normally used to layer fragrances or to give a certain fragrance that that oomph that it needs you know it's used to amplify fragrances this perfume to me is unisex it's a simple and basic kind of fragrance like it's fresh soft powdery but it also has that woody amber undertone this perfume is best suited for people who can't stand bold in your face potent fragrances or people who are like allergic to perfumes because I remember when I was back in Dubai with Chrissy she can't stand bold perfumes listen I had a hard time spraying my perfumes around her like she'd sneeze she'd cough her eyes would run water and she had a decant of not a perfume and it was fine for her like she didn't sneeze cough or anything because it's very faint it's a very pleasant smell and what I've noticed is that it depends on your body chemistry because on her when she sprayed it and she came out the bathroom I was like are you wearing Chloe she's like what no so on her it smelled like Chloe so I guess it depends on your body chemistry and she was fine with it so as I said you know if you know somebody who's allergic to perfumes or don't like bold fragrances this would be a a good gift for them if you're willing to spend this much money on a fragrance just to layer or to give another fragrance that oomph that it's looking for be my guest who am i to tell you how to spend your money i'd be bang out of order to tell you not to spend your money in this yeah this ladies and gentlemen is Juliet has a gun not a perfume final thoughts i'm not a massive fan as you guys could tell i'm not a massive fan of the house juliet has a gun i mean the discovery kit it's an amazing way you know like an introduction to the house it's a great way to know about some of their fragrances you know the sillage the longevity and all that jazz so i can't knock the discovery kit yeah i just think they're overpriced for what they actually are 
because some of these fragrances do resemble other designer or celebrity fragrances that are much cheaper the thing that drew me to them was the name you know it's so abstract Juliet has a gun like I really wanted to know about some of their fragrances so yeah I mean they have other perfumes as well for what I've smelled it's yeah they're not a powerhouse do you know what I mean you might think different from what I think you get me like you might smell any of these fragrances that you might think they're beast mode because you know different body chemistry this is just my opinion you know my take on the fragrances in this discovery kit so yep don't come for me well that's all I have for you today my loves I do hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give me a thumbs up by clicking that like button comment down below and let me know if you tried anything from this house and what your thoughts are don't forget to subscribe before you go and I guess I'll see you in my next video bye next up we have Moscow Mule is that a moth nah you bang out our order do you actually live here what are we at order order come out to my house come out to my house we have vanilla vibes oh my god is that my stomach oh no let me go and get something to eat you think i'm gonna die recording this video no please this fragrance because he wanted this to bring like a breath did something just fly across my screen